time to take a look at a Ricochet release now and a game that follows further adventures of Sir Arthur Pendragon. The game is called Dragon Skull. So like many a Ricochet release, Dragon Skull features the original artwork from the Ultimate release, which is very cool. It's got the Dragon Skull logo with a dragon on and some kind of dragon skull, I guess, surrounded by some flames and things. Cool stuff, and the Ricochet logo on the front as well, of course. Dragon Skull logo on the spine, and unsurprisingly, the back cover's got some screenshots of the game. And a blurb, guides Sir Arthur Pendragon past warrior ants and lava flows to a final encounter with the fearsome Dragon Skull. Icon driven arcade adventure game for the 16K that seems to have been taken from the Spectrum version of the game I think a little bit stunned by that definitely not the 16K anyway um, it features superb animation incredible sound effects and a fire breathing dragon or fire breathing dragons in fact sounds pretty cool inside the packaging we have some Instructions, of course, or rather extravagant story behind this, I would say, rather than actual instructions. So there's a, an intro there, it's a shadowy vapours. At last my journey's end draws near as the Isle of Dragon Skull looms closer on the horizon. Blah, 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 blah. Setting the scene a little bit. And then it goes on and tells you about the warning. Thy soul shall be taken, it says. And at the bottom there, it's got the copyright, Ultimate Play of the Game, and also mentioned that it was licensed to Mastertronic by US Gold, who bought out the Ultimate back catalogue, as Ultimate went on to become rare. And inside, there's a bit more blurb, and then it's got the loading instructions, and the actual controls. Sir Arthur Pendragon can be fully controlled using your joystick. Surprise, surprise. Various objects that you can use. And some keyboard controls. And that's about it. So this is the loading screen and um, this is actually the loading screen from the original Ultimate Play the Game tape. You may recall from some of my earlier videos that my copy of Dragon Skull seems to have a original Ultimate tape in and then I bought another copy expecting it to have the proper Mastertronic version of the tape in and it had another Ultimate tape in so I gave up at that point. Um, so this is the Ultimate original release loading even though it's in the Mastertronic packaging and this is the loading screen which is quite nice. So the game's loaded and it's very similar looking to Black Witch which I reviewed some time ago and is another of the Arthur Pendragon games. Uh, so you've got the high score and the last score and uh, some keyboard controls and otherwise it's press joystick button to start the game pretty unspectacular and when you press fire the music fades out and immediately you're presented with this where you basically obviously arrived on this island on your little boat and there's this horrendous noise in the background and I thought at first this was a, a bug with the game um, but it actually turns out that that noise is being made by this horrible thing here this skull that's the entrance to the caves which when you walk into it drains your energy that, that, that funny sort of blinking flashing of your character and that noise is uh, when you're losing energy uh, and yeah, after a bit of investigation I finally found out that if you step on one of these grey starfish this one to be specific uh, the door opens and the noise stops and is replaced with the trudging of Arthur Pendragon's feet. So Arthur Pendragon is quite nicely animated just like the other Ultimate games that were uh, specifically for the Commodore 64. The graphics are very chunky um, a lot of people complained about them. I kind of like them actually. I kind of like that chunky sort of nicely animated look and it's got this strange 3D sort of perspective where he walks backwards and forwards at a slight angle. So anyway as you can see Quite nice, the skull's eyes are following me from left to right as I move. Let's get into this cavern and see what we can do. So, pretty nice graphics once you're inside the cavern as well. K 
cavern, cave even. Uh, so straight away there's things that can kill you but you have got various options which you can use any pretty much any key on the keyboard to select but I'm just using spacebar generally. So you've got a cloak or actually you haven't got a cloak but you will get one eventually in the game. There's pause, there's this green thing which allows you to throw kind of a green missile. There's uh, the blue one which lets you jump when you press fire and there's also a red one which is a spade which allows you to dig when you've got the spade which I haven't got at the moment. It just so happens I know where the spade is from previous playthroughs so I'm going to go and get that first. So I've armed myself with my little missile and I'm... but you can't shoot this guy which is quite annoying so he basically takes some energy off you whether you like it or not. So we'll skip past him pretty quickly. So you've got missiles but they don't work against everything. As you can see the caves are pretty samey looking. One of the biggest problems with this game and you'll see it more in some of the later sections is you get stuck on bits of scenery which don't allow you to get past them very easily uh, but we'll come back to that. Uh, so th this now in this cave there's the spade on the back wall there. This presents you with your first puzzle is how to get the spade. As you can see there's these two big ant gods who are converging on the spade to prevent you from collecting it. Once again, can't kill them with the missile. But actually what you can do, if you go back in, first of all, I'll try the obvious thing, which is to run into this gap and try and get the spade. No, can't do that either. Actually how you get the spade is to shoot it from the right position. Get there eventually. No, maybe not. Maybe they have to be spread out a bit before you can get it. There we go. One spade collected and 100 points awarded. Let's go back to where I started. Little bouncy eye guy. Taking a bit of energy off me. I will say straight away before we go any further this is a lot better than Black Witch. There aren't enemies on every screen draining your energy and killing you, so it's a little bit more forgiving than Black Witch, which is a good thing. So uh, this obviously is an X mark marking the spot. Pretty obvious, so you dig into that, and something comes out that kills you, or at least drains your energy. It's a recurring theme of the game. So I'm in a, quite a long sort of connecting cavern here now. There's bats flying around. There's random stalactites dropping, which you've got no chance of predicting where they're going to come from. There's also drops dropping from the ceiling, which again you've got no chance of predicting. And there's a big glowing skull rotating there, which actually opens up into more very similar looking caves. Now I'm going to go for this cavern quickly because it is killing your energy. As you can see, a life has gone there. A head has turned to a skull. Um, when you've got the cape, I believe you can go through those caverns without sustaining any damage, but I haven't got the cape yet. Here's another X marks a spot in a different coloured cavern, which is nice. So let's dig this one up. Oh, and very nicely, that gives me an extra life. Obviously, I knew that was going to be the case because I've already played through it a few times. In this cave here, here's one of those five breathing dragons. We'll come back to him later. So I've come back out to the beach where I started and the reason for that is having looked on a guide or a YouTube video that already exists on the internet um, I found that there's something to dig up on the beach which I never would have found myself. Apparently it's about here. Not exactly though. Oh there we go. There's a hole form in there. Well, this is proving quite difficult. There we go. Finally got it after a bit of manoeuvring around. 
and that's given me the cape which when you activate the cape gives you a nice glow you can't shoot when you've got the cape obviously because you'd have to select a different icon at the top but that protects you from various stuff so with that let's go back and take on that dragon which obviously I won't be able to oh it doesn't last forever either and then it takes a while to recharge I think yeah I can't use it again at the moment so you've got to use it with caution or sporadically okay so here we are facing off against the dragon seems a bit of a mismatch but hopefully it won't be too difficult to get rid of what I found is if you stand up this side of the screen he actually can't get you but actually it looks like you can't get him either which doesn't make it particularly easy he's actually not that difficult to avoid I've got no idea how many hits it takes to get rid of him, but I hope it's not too many because I'm getting bored already. There we go. Finally got rid of him. What exciting adventures await across this river of blood. Or is it lava? If I could get along this plank, I'd let you know. Okay, so we're in a new place. Oh, well, that's a good start. At least you can actually shoot things in this area. Or you can try. Oh, I can't get over that bridge at the moment. What happens if I walk to the left then? I've never been in this section of the game before. It's the first time I've actually got as far as getting rid of a dragon there's a lot of walking to the left to be done in this section and then I get to nothing that's really annoying all oh, these bouncing skulls are so annoying And after some endless shooting and getting nowhere, that seems to be game over. But I will go back to this section and see if I can make any more progress than I just did. At least my score is better than previous goes. And after it seemingly hours of blasting stuff everything's suddenly vanished and it's making a kind of buzzing noise in the background and it's allowing me to cross the bridge so we got there in the end but I don't know how you'd work out that you're actually supposed to do that it's pure trial and error um, I don't mind puzzles if there's some obvious sort of indication of what you're supposed to do but uh, that was a bit ridiculous continue to make that strange sort of humming sound in the background now as well so the quest continues not that I really care anymore because I've got bored of it now and I'm in another cave surprise surprise nothing to the left apart from some drops Another bouncing eyeball to the right and another long kind of cavern thing which I shall move along and we've got another skull door thing and more 
caves with more doors. Mustn't have taken very long to draw the graphics for this game since virtually every room's a variation on the same tiles. Oh, we've got another X marks a spot here, so let's dig this baby up and see what happens. Oh, another extra life. Not to be sneezed at. So I've come across another one of these long caves. Oh, and here's something different. It's some bouncing eyeballs shooting at me, just to make matters even worse. So we're getting into the depths of the caves here and it's all looking very samey and kind of boring. I will persist for a little bit longer before I give up. Another bouncing eyeball in another similar looking cave. And another cave. And another X marks the spot. What does this reveal? Nothing nice. Oh, and we've got another dragon now, a red dragon this time. I suspect it's going to be more of the same trying to get rid of this thing. The dragons are disappointingly easy to get rid of, to be perfectly honest. That said, I am running out of health faces now. So I might not survive. It's going to be close this. I'm not going to last much longer regardless I suspect. Oh, got him though. Or her. Could be a female dragon. So let's see what the next area of the caves holds for us. And it's more of this one then, more of the same shooting things. Oh, it's a purple snaky thing this time. And there's no way I'm going to stick this through again because it took ages last time. So let's just shoot as much as I can until I run out of health, which isn't going to take too much longer either. Basically this game seems to be a war of attrition, it's, have you got the patience to try and work through all these screens of shooting stuff over and over and over again. There we go, and I haven't, and it's game over again with the scary go ghost thing. And off I go, my spirit's off into the ether, and to be honest that's probably for the best. So that's it in terms of a review. It's not the worst game in the world, it's definitely more fun than Black Witch, which was painful. Um, but it's still not very good, it's kind of boring, repetitive, all the rooms look the same and it's going to take a lot of perseverance to get to the end of the game. So probably just about worth $1.99 if you could stick out the uh, endless wandering through caves, but uh, not one for me personally. <laughs>